If you're not feeling like yourself since your thyroid diagnosis, you are not alone. In this two-part podcast series, I'm going to share my story with you of how I went from sickness turning me into someone I didn't even recognize anymore to me reclaiming a really vibrant, happy life again that is built on thyroid healthy choices. You know, for a condition that is considered easy to treat, it really has changed every aspect of my life and in many ways for the better. My healing journey didn't happen overnight, but it did happen. And in hopes that maybe you'll find yourself in my story and be helped by it, I want to share it with you today. So I've outlined my journey in 10 steps. And in today's episode, we're going to cover the first five steps that helped me reclaim my health. Let's dig in. Hello, thyroid drivers. Welcome back to another episode of Thyroid Healthy Bites, a weekly podcast dedicated to helping you live well and eat well so you can feel well. I'm Ginny Mahar, your host and the face behind the apron at hypothyroidchef.com. All right. Welcome back to the show, Thyroid Thrivers. Jenny here. I'm thrilled to be with you today. Thank you for joining me for a story. And today I'm going to be sharing really my personal story with you. And I know many of you who have been listening to the show for a while or who get my emails or read my blog posts have already heard a lot of parts and pieces of this story. But what I did in creating this two-part blog post and podcast episode is I really wanted to outline like how did I go from rock bottom health and barely being able to function to reclaiming my health, getting my life and energy back. So I broke that down into 10 steps. We're going to cover the first five today in part one of this series. And in the next episode, I'll cover steps five through 10. So you'll get to hear the whole story. And I'm sharing this not to be prescriptive in what you need to do because no two thrivers journeys are the same. We all have unique uh, needs and sensitivities and circumstances. We all have different root causes and stories that led us to where we're at. And, you know, no two healing journeys are the same. So I share this not to be prescriptive about what you should necessarily do, but in that maybe you'll just see yourself in it, that you'll glean some inspiration, that maybe it will give you clues or make you think about different rocks you haven't looked under yet. Um, And and ultimately, I want to give you hope that it is possible to turn your health around. I know there's just way too many of us out there who are suffering in spite of a normal TSH, in spite of a you know proper diagnosis, in spite of our doctors telling us there's nothing wrong with you because your labs are normal and you're on proper medication. You know, there actually are a lot of us still suffering with this with hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's, you know, something that is marketed to us as patients oftentimes as being no big deal. And it really, you know, the truth is for a lot of us, it really can be a big deal. And it certainly was for me. Let's dig in and get started with step one, coming out of the thyroid closet. Now, I know this might sound like a strange way to say that, but I'll I'll explain what I'm talking about here. There's this kind of uh, undercurrent, I feel, in our culture this undercurrent of shame around aging and disease. And as thyroid patients, here we are, we're taking our medication and a lot of us are trying to pretend like that's working and we're fine and we're not actually tired all day when we are. We, some of us try to like contain these issues to the privacy of our medicine cabinets and we don't want to talk about it openly. You know, at the doctor's office, we don't want to question the doctor's advice, even if that little voice inside us is like, wait a minute, I don't feel okay. I disagree with this. I know there's something wrong. My body is telling me there, you know, this treatment isn't addressing my issue. So that's why I think this is, you know, just a critical and in some ways can be 
the most difficult first step that needs to be mentioned. Because when we decide to try and heal our bodies or our minds or our souls for that matter, and and I think most of the time it requires healing all three, right? It does make this statement of acknowledgement that there is something to heal, that there is something wrong happening inside of us. And that takes courage. It also takes, you know, a commitment to self-care, sometimes radical self-care. It takes making healthy boundaries. It takes advocating for ourselves. It takes asking for what we need. And that can make some of us squirm. And I think some of us mistakenly maybe associate that with selfishness, okay? But the thing is that in order to heal, we first have to acknowledge the wound, we have to acknowledge the the disease or the so-called imperfection inside of us. And then we have to love and accept ourselves enough to really make our health a priority. I remember when I started Hypothyroid Chef and some people close to me really squirmed about that and expressed discomfort with my coming out of the thyroid closet. And They discourage me when, you know, I veered into this, uh, this niche, I guess, like saying, why would you want to highlight that about yourself? Why would you want to focus on this thing that's wrong with you on your illness? Maybe the, you know, the subtext is why would you want to focus on this imperfection? Like we don't talk about these things. Now, I, I see an evolution of attitudes and thought around that as, you know, I see it in a lot of younger people who, and I don't want to generalize and maybe it's just my Instagram feed, but I admire so much, you know, how I witness in younger people more comfort in advocating for themselves, um, more willingness to say, no, I'm going to make a healthy boundary here. I'm going to ask for what I need. And I know that I des- am deserving of the care and treatment and validation that I need. And wouldn't it be great if we could kind of, you know, if we could evolve that way? Because the reason that I think this is important is that I knew that shame was not going to help me get my health back. And it wasn't going to help me gracefully navigate this disease. Healing doesn't happen by keeping things hidden away in the dark. We have to bring it out into the light. We have to wrap our arms around it and accept it. And if we're scrambling to just mask our symptoms and kind of hide, then just I'm just going to power through because I don't want anybody to know that I'm struggling or that I have needs or that, you know, there is something different about me. You know, I mean, that can be really exhausting. Uh, I, I don't think it's sustainable. And and really, for some of us, for the vast majority of us who have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, we have Hashimoto's. So while we're doing that, we just have further and further damage to our thyroid occurring. So how is that serving our health? It doesn't. If we're going to refuse to accept and learn about and even lean into our diagnosis and what it means for our bodies, there is a risk of, I think, worsening issues because we're not going to be addressing what we need to change. You know, the behavior changes, the habit changes, maybe some diet and lifestyle changes that need to happen in order for us to thrive. And to make those changes, you know, as I mentioned, this has affected every aspect of my life. And I've talked about this on the show before, you know, one of my stumbling blocks on this journey was having a hard time, you know, sharing with my loved ones about that, advocating for my needs, being, you know, comfortable, getting myself comfortable with speaking up for myself that way and inviting my loved ones into my healing journey, including like my friends in my social circle and saying, yeah, I I don't really drink that much anymore. Or gosh, I don't, can we go to a different restaurant together? I, I don't eat gluten or dairy really. And this restaurant doesn't have things I can eat, you know, just naming examples of different ways where coming out of the illness closet has helped and supported and enabled me 
to get the help and the care and the self-care and the, you know, the food and all of those things that I need to be able to be okay. You know, that doesn't happen if we just say, I'm just going to quietly take my pill back here and not talk about it because I don't want to be a nuisance and I don't want to be different. And I don't want, you know, all that stuff, all the normal human things. So many of us bump up against, you know, between our ears that can be stumbling blocks or roadblocks for us on the healing journey. You know, I and I think another big part of this for me too was that I learned that the vast majority of us who have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism actually have Hashimoto's. And when we have one autoimmune disease, we're three times more likely to end up with additional autoimmune diseases. Now, if we're taking the best care of ourselves, if we're keeping our inflammation down, it stands to reason in my mind and according to some of the experts I follow that we might be able to lower that risk somewhat. And that really got my attention. And I I don't say that to scare anyone, but to just build awareness that you know, there are real risks here of just ignoring the fact that the vast majority of us have an autoimmune condition and all the major food and lifestyle interventions we can make to assist us in thriving despite that autoimmune condition, to assist us in potentially even lowering our antibodies and lowering that autoimmune response in the body so we don't end up with something like uh, multiple autoimmune diseases or more serious and, and debilitating autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, for example, ulcerative colitis. I mean, the list of autoimmune conditions goes on and just seems to be growing all the time. But learning that got my attention. And I think in addition to that, I guess I just reached a point where I was done pretending that I didn't feel sick and tired. I was done trying to just like power through and cover it up and go on with my day in spite of the fact that every day was a slog at that point in the beginning from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. So I just kind of hit a wall with that and decided to throw my own insecurity to the wind and essentially go public and start hypothyroid chef, basically therefore admitting to the world that I was struggling with this so-called imperfection or what some might perceive as, you know, an imperfection or, or whatever you want to call it. I surrendered to it. I accepted it. I allowed it to change me for the better. And really that was one of the best decisions I have made on my journey. So in case you need to hear it, that quest to improve your health and protect your health is absolutely worth it. You are worth it. Even if it means that maybe your friends and family might sometimes be made a little uncomfortable or disappointed or inconvenienced by what that entails. Take some deep breaths. We have to do the personal inner work. And then we really kind of have to take the leap here and, and lean in, dive into this and dig into what's going on in our bodies How can we educate ourselves? What can we do about this? Not all of this is in our control. You know, I never want to make any of you feel like if you just did enough, you could reverse this. I'm I'm really, I disagree with that messaging because we don't have total control over this, but we do have some. So let's learn about what that sum is because it can absolutely move the needle. It can help us just feel as, as good as we possibly can. It doesn't mean we feel perfect all the time, but it can help us feel as good as we possibly can. And it can empower us with tools in our healing toolbox for when health issues arise you know, because of our hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's or even beyond that, what we learn on this journey applies to our lifelong health. So this quest, yes, it has its challenges, but it really can be a profoundly positive thing. This leads us to step two of how I reclaim my health from Hashimoto's, which was getting educated. Okay. So we kind of touched on that in step one, like embracing this, accepting this, leaning into this makes you realize like, I I need to know more about what's happening inside 
my body. And I've learned so much from all the all the thyroid books on my shelves. I have so many at this point. I started Hypothyroid Chef in 2015 and have been podcasting for quite a while, have interviewed so many incredible experts, have read so many incredible expert books. And that collection has grown from these trusted resources. And not just books, but there's also some really great online resources. There's really, I think, just too many good thyroid resources to list and experts to list. So what I'll share with you today to keep it streamlined are my top three reading essentials. These are the books that have been most helpful to me on my healing journey. So first was Dr. Isabella Wentz's book, Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, Lifestyle Interventions for Finding and Treating the Root Cause. And I will put the links to these books in the show notes. You don't have to remember or or be grabbing a pencil to write these down. You can just find the links in the show notes. But Dr. Isabella Wentz is a Hashimoto's patient herself and a pharmacist and someone who really specializes in explaining Hashimoto's and um, educating patients on what they can do to manage their Hashimoto's with food and lifestyle interventions namely also with supplements. She's a great resource for that. But this is the book I I probably most often and most strongly recommend to other thyroid patients, especially once they've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, because what her book does is it really not only explains the root cause factors, but gives us a roadmap for what we can do about it. The second book on my top three reading essentials is The Thyroid Connection by Amy Myers, MD. Why you feel tired, brain fogged, and overweight, and how to get your life back. Amy Myers is a medical doctor who has been through her own thyroid journey. She started with Graves' disease that ultimately led her to have her thyroid removed and kind of regretted that decision when she realized it really is not as simple as she was taught in medical school that you just normalize TSH and treat patients with levothyroxine and everything solved. She learned the hard way that that wasn't how it worked for her. And she had to also learn as Isabella once learned on her healing journey as well. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot that we can do. There's a lot of supplements that can help and things like that. There's a lot of testing that can, you know, help individuals discover what their root cause factors are. But I always uh, include Amy Myers's book because many people come to me because they started out with Graves' disease. And I think Dr. Myers is a great resource for that because she has that experience and speaks to that a little bit more thoroughly than some other resources that only uh, focus on hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. Dr. Myers has that that unique aspect that she was a Graves patient and and you know so many hyperthyroid patients or people with Graves disease which is autoimmune hyperthyroidism do eventually end up in the hypothyroid camp because most treatment paths lead to that. That is something that was taught to me by my dear friend and mentor, Mary Showman, who is the author of the third book in my pile of reading essentials, Living Well with Hypothyroidism, What Your Doctor Doesn't Tell You That You Need to Know. So I'm so lucky to know Mary and to have been guided by her on my journey as a thyroid advocate and Um, to have gleaned from her wisdom and knowledge. Mary has written over a dozen books on thyroid health. I always say she's one of the first people you see when you start Googling for thyroid information because she writes for so many different health websites and, you know, does a lot of freelancing that way, but is also, you know, a, a patient advocate and health coach. And really the thumbprint that Mary brings to this is let's inform patients so that they can become empowered thyroid patients. And she's a wonderful writer and does it in a way that is very accessible, entertaining. She has a wonderful sense of humor. She just makes this stuff really digestible and simplifies it in a in a great way and and this living well with hypothyroidism you know all three of these books they cover so much of the same material because you know so many of the recommendations are the same 
Um, but each of these experts does give it their own thumbprint. So I'll leave those links for you in the show notes. You can look into them and decide for yourself if any of them seems like it might be good for you to read. And the reason I want to share these with you is, look, you can go to the library and get yourself a library card. It costs nothing to access these books. You can educate yourself and completely change the course of your health by learning about what it means to have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's and what you can do about it. And also that's going to save you a lot of time and money at the doctor's office. But, but yeah, these top three for me, they're littered with sticky notes. They're covered in highlighter and they all, you know, really share stories too of how the authors reclaimed their health and then helped others do the same. I think one of the things that we get from these books or from other people sharing their stories, like I'm doing now, is to be reminded that we're not alone. You are not alone. You're not crazy. It's not all in your head. And those books, they validated what I was going through. They also showed me and gave me hope that there were things I had control over and that I could do. And they empowered me and helped me get more out of my medical appointments. They saved me time and money, and ultimately they started me down this track of being able to solve the mystery behind my Hashimoto's. Step three, I recorded my health history. So I opened a blank Google document. I started at the very beginning, like birth to today, my whole life. And this is a wonderful exercise and very much like a functional medicine exercise. You know, the health history is huge and any kind of functional medicine doctor is going to look at your whole health history and they're going to want to know all the way to birth or even in utero, different factors that might've happened along the way. How did you grow up? Were there traumatic events? Were there big life changes. You know, for me, I lost my dad when I was 23 months old, which was apocalyptic for my family and a trauma that myself, my four siblings and my mom still very, it's very much a part of us. It's a part of everything we do. So that was sort of a a major foundational trauma in my story was losing my dad. And then all that happened after that. I also grew up, uh, my childhood home was across the street from one of the most polluted rivers in the country. I know this is the sad story of so many American rivers, but yeah, polluted by a local chemical company. And of course, that's going to go into the groundwater and the environment. There's, you know, a a question of exposure there. And when you're thinking about, you know, toxins like fluoride, which is a known thyroid disrupting toxin, I was drinking from a fluoridated water supply in my hometown. And I was a child of the 80s. You know, I, I had a my mom was a great cook and she was health conscious, but we ate a lot of, you know, SpaghettiOs and <laughs> a lot of Kraft macaroni and cheese. It was just a very typical 1980s American childhood that way. When I got sick, it was straight to the doctor and I was put on antibiotics galore pretty haphazardly, which we've paid the price for dearly. And and today I see like my son's pediatrician, for example, actively, uh, probably along with many of her colleagues, trying to unravel the damage that was done from this uh, haphazard antibiotic use in in the 80s. Later, I had another traumatic incident in my late 20s. I had an ectopic pregnancy that ruptured and I almost bled to death internally and I had to have emergency surgery and a hospital stay. And I happened to be living in Alaska at the time in a town with one of the worst rated hospitals. So it was just an incredibly scary experience. And after, like in the aftermath of that traumatic event, you know, of course there was so much to deal with. I was dealing with facing my own mortality. I was dealing with the loss of my first pregnancy, my first child, essentially, which I know is something, you know, a lot of women have been through and and my heart and love goes out to you because it's incredibly painful. That's a major, you know, major emotional trauma. 
And I started having health issues after that because of, I think, the emotional load of that. I ended up with shingles. I started having anxiety attacks for the first time. I had insomnia. I had a very noticeable increase in hair loss. About a year after that, I started having these episodes of debilitating stomach pain that they never were able to diagnose in spite of doing endoscopy where they put a camera down your throat and look at your, you know, your esophagus and your stomach lining. And they were like, um, we don't really see anything. It was a little red. So, you know, let's just treat it as reflux. We'll put you on some proton pump inhibitors. Like it affects our digestive juices, which affects the nutrients we get from our food, which can lead to things like bone density issues. And this was for something that they didn't, they never really diagnosed. I'll tell you right now, it turned out to be a food sensitivity. It was that I needed to eat not even no eggs. It was that I needed to eat less eggs. I was eating a lot of eggs at the time. And I, I, because the stomach pain was not immediate, it was so delayed and ran, you know, seemingly random. I hadn't yet made that correlation, but so all this stuff, you know, goes on my health history right? In 2011, I had the birth of my son, which just, oh my gosh, what an incredible life change. What an incredible gift. I just absolutely being his mom has been one of the greatest joys and gifts of my life. He was born via C-section. So there it was trauma there. And I think because of a lot of things I've already mentioned in this brief health history I've shared, you know, a bit of with you today, it ended up being the tipping point. Pregnancy is a common trigger for hypothyroidism. And sure enough, I found out a couple months after he was born that I had hypothyroidism. Luckily, my doctor caught it. She asked, you know, how are you feeling? And let's t- let's just do a test and check your thyroid and sure enough she was like yep you're hypothyroid let's get you on some thyroid medication and that was basically the end of the conversation she checked me once a year you know so that was that was the beginning of my thyroid journey was in 2011 and those first few years those first four years, really, even though I was uh, on me- proper medication, even though she was monitoring my TSH once a year and it was normal, I was not okay. I wasn't thriving. My energy was really just on this consistent, gradual decline in spite of the normal TSH, in spite of being on thyroid medication. I was on, le- gen- I think, generic levothyroxine for most of that time. And parallel to that increase in fatigue was an increase in viruses and infections, which makes sense to me. If your body's exhausted, if you have this systemic exhaustion from being continuing to be hypothyroid in spite of medication, uh, which many of us are, especially if we're on T4 only medication, you're you're not going to thrive. And I was not thriving. I couldn't fight off the common cold. That would, t- you know, one cold would turn into double ear infections. I'd get tonsillitis, things I've never had before. So I was on round after round of multiple antibiotics again. At the end of that four years, I think I was on four rounds of antibiotics in one season. So it got really bad and it was abnormal for me. I knew it was, but I kept being reassured by my doctor and other doctors I saw throughout all that illness and fatigue has nothing to do with your thyroid. Your TSH is normal. You're on your meds. So that's not it. You just, you know, whatever. You're a new mom, your kids in preschool, whatever. Don't worry about it. I was worried about it. I was not okay. And I kept telling my doctor that. And I also kept telling her that I noticed that my diet was requiring more and more attention to maintain a healthy weight. I got the canned advice that so many of us get to eat less and exercise more. And so I started on a very popular and well-known calorie restriction program using points. And that worked for a few months. And then I just plateaued. And then I started gaining weight on a calorie restricted diet, which is incredibly frustrating and an experience I know probably many of you have been through. 
the problem behind just eat less and exercise more is that if we maintain that for too long, it lowers our metabolism. And when we have hypothyroidism, we already have a compromised metabolism. And yes, medication can correct that. It can correct it better if that medication is optimized, it meaning we're on the right medication at the right dosage for us. And many of us are not on optimized medication. Many of us are not tested comprehensively to look at our thyroid numbers and see if our T4 only medications are even working. And then we gain weight and we're told to just eat less and exercise more. And there are a lot of thyroid patients out there on very, very calorie restricted diets consistently for years doing metabolic damage. And that's where I ended up. And it got to where I, it was a very stressful time for me with my eating because it was just like, I can't get away with anything, you know, and that made me sad. I love food. I'm a chef for Pete's sake, you know, Um, and why isn't this working? I'm putting so much effort into this. Why am I not seeing results? But really just overall, my whole health profile was at odds with the demands of my life and with my dreams. You know, I'm an active person. I wanted to be an active mom. I'm a passionate individual. I have big goals and dreams to accomplish in my life. And I could barely get through the day for four years. And that, of course, took a huge toll on my entire existence, including my mental health. You know, by the end, I I felt so down and depressed and, and I was offered antidepressants, but I knew that wasn't the root cause. It was like, no, there's something wrong with my health. I knew that. I knew that. And I kept being told, nope you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you because your TSH is normal and you're you're taking your meds. But once I put all of that history down on paper from the very beginning to where I ended up, it was laid out and that gave me this like undeniable clarity. It was like, whoa, here it is. There were signs of thyroid issues, I think, long before I was ever diagnosed. But I think what the what that health timeline enabled me to do was to get that bird's eye view and to be able to bullet point my goals, my dreams, my health dreams and desires, and bullet point the challenges I was facing. And it gave me this collection place to start tracking the interventions that I was doing, like taking a a new supplement or making a new diet or lifestyle change. I still use this health timeline. I'll put my doctor's appointments on there. So I have this collection place for my April 4th appointment with Dr. So-and-so. Here's my bullet point list of symptoms. Here are the questions I want to ask. And then a place where I can also write a follow-up from the appointment of this is what they said. This is what they felt we should do now. And maybe what we should think about down the road, because it's really hard to remember all that stuff. It's especially hard to remember all that stuff if you have brain fog as so many thyroid patients do. So the health timeline is a wonderful tool in that it gives you that clarity and bird's eye perspective. It gives you a collection place for medical notes, doctor notes, questions, bullet points. It gives you a place to track the interventions you're making. And in doing that, it gives you a place to be able to see and review the results and the side effects and the positive and negative effects of all the things that you're doing. And it enables you to notice pattern like gut dysbiosis, really common problem for Hashimoto's patients, something I've dealt with a few times on my healing journey. If it happens again, I can go back to that health timeline. I can search it for gut dysbiosis and see what worked for me before. All those notes are in there. It's gold. It really is. It's been one of the most powerful tools in my thyroid toolbox, and I will continue to update that for the rest of my life. I love Google Documents. I just start a Google document, and one thing I've found that works well is when you make entries to make entries at the top of the document. So things get, you know, they get pushed down the list, but when you open that, what's coming up is right there at the top, so you don't end up having to scroll 25 pages down to see, to make a note, hey, 
ask Dr. So-and-so about this issue that you're having or this supplement you're curious about or this medication change you've wondered about. Just some simple tips. Um, and I'm sure many of you have other systems that you, you've used that work really well for that. If so, let us know. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment if you have a system that you really like for keeping health notes. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. But yeah, with that health timeline and that list of specific questions and concerns and, and desires and goals, then I was ready to find someone to help me essentially unravel the mystery of my health. Which brings us to step four, I hired a health detective. And what I mean by this is I found a new doctor someone who could be that health detective. As you know, as I've kind of hinted at already, I really hobbled along for four years after my diagnosis, feeling awful in spite of treatment. And I still had no idea I even had Hashimoto's at that point, four years in. My general physician at the time never tested me for it. Why? Because it didn't change her standard course of treatment, which is the standard course of conventional treatment that is still being used by many, if not most doctors, which is uh, monitor TSH, normalize the TSH using synthetic thyroid hormone medication, such as levothyroxine, probably for life for many of us. Meanwhile, my body was quietly carrying out this ongoing autoimmune attack on my th thyroid that I didn't even know about. Now, my doctor was okay with that treatment plan and with that standard of care. I wasn't. So I set out to find not just a new doctor, but really, you know, that person that I was hoping for and dreaming of, the my personal health investigator, somebody who was willing to spend the time and listen and validate and help me solve the mystery behind why my health was just going so far downhill. It, I was terrified. By the end of that four years, I actually thought maybe I just am a hypochondriac and I'm going crazy because I had been told so many times what I was dealing with had nothing to do with my with my thyroid. But finding that new doctor who could help me choose what rocks are we going to look under, who first of all validated my experience and that no, you're not crazy. And it is not normal for you. At, at the time, I think I was like 37 years old, 38 years old. It's not normal for you at this age to feel tired all day, every day. And yes, there are things you can do. That person really helped me formulate a plan and find the root cause and reclaim my health. I know that finding a doctor, finding the right doctor for so many of us can be a huge challenge. For me, the best option was a local naturopath, and it wasn't easy to make the decision to go see her. First of all, I had to really put some feelers out in my community, and I asked like everyone I knew, have you worked with a naturopath? Do you know of one? Have you heard anything? You know, and this one name kept coming up from people I knew people who had said, boy, she's really helped me. And so I ended up making an appointment with my naturopath. It also took me a long time, not just to find her, but also to get over the mental roadblock of being willing to spend out of pocket money for medical care. You know, in our United States insurance system, it was like, this should be covered by insurance. I shouldn't have to do more than a copay for my thyroid care, right? I was already paying so much for health insurance. It just, it seems unfair. And I know I was learning at that point, I was reading and I was hearing over and over from the experts and from other thyroid patients I was meeting. Oh, you really need to take a whole health approach. You may need to go outside the realm of conventional medicine to get the care and testing and treatment that you need. And it was crucial for me. So I am so glad that I did eventually overcome that mental hurdle and choose to make that investment in my health. And today I can tell you it was absolutely worth it. It took time to find the right doctor. I had to wait six weeks, I think, for an, my first appointment with her. It took all kinds of tests. We did a whole bunch of tests. There were supplements, there were dietary changes, there were lifestyle changes and all of it has been 100% worth it. 
I'll never forget that first appointment where she spent an hour and a half with me and just, I got kind of choked up in her office because I was so relieved to finally be validated, you know, and to be told you're not alone. And a lot of thyroid patients go through this and it's not okay. And there's a lot we can do. You do not, it's not okay for you to feel this way. And you don't need to just accept that this is your fate that you're just going to be tired for the rest of your life at 37 years old. I mean, come on, looking back, I'm like, it still just blows my mind. And I know I'm so far from alone in that experience. And it really is a huge part of what fuels my fire and drives me to do what I do. But if you are at that that crossroads, for me, it was 100% worth it. And I will tell you right now, my naturopath was thrilled to have my health timeline. Before we move on to step five, I will add an update uh, for you in this kind of vein of of finding a a new doctor and finding the right doctor. I uh, made the the shift in 2023 to receiving my thyroid care and treatment from a doctor at Paloma Health. I still work with my naturopath. I adore her. I owe her so much. She really has been a huge part of my healing story and she has taught me things and completely changed the course of, of my life and my health. Um, and I will always be indebted to her, but she's getting ready to retire. And, and my current physician isn't familiar with the type of thyroid medication that I do best on. So therefore wasn't really comfortable prescribing it. And, you know, I, this is another thing I know I'm not alone in going through. So I shifted in 2023 to receiving my thyroid care and treatment from a doctor at Paloma Health. Paloma Health specializes in thyroid specific telemedicine, and they specialize in offering a higher standard of care. Most of their doctors, I would say, and their nutritionists, they also have nutritionists and health coaches and all, you know, it's like full service thyroid care. Um, Most of their practitioners have some functional holistic or integrative training. And so they all take a more whole life, whole health approach. The reason I want to add, you know, tack this on here and and make this update is that Paloma Health also works with insurance providers. And even if you don't have health insurance, Their services are really affordable out of pocket. I mean, I love the service that they're offering. I so support their mission. I partnered with them years ago because I believe in their mission and I still to this day do. And now I'm actually a patient. So a great way to check out their services and get onboarded with them is they offer a complete at-home thyroid test kit that includes not just TSH, but also TPO antibodies to let you know, do you have Hashimoto's or not? And also free T3 and free T4, which are going to help you discern, you know, is your medication doing what it needs to do in your body to truly correct your hypothyroidism? Because TSH alone doesn't, it's not enough. It doesn't give us those clear answers. And the doctors at Paloma too, I think are just across the board going to, they help you interpret that and can help you get on the correct medication optimal medication, again, meaning the the right medication at the right dosage for you as an individual. And that can vary from person to person. So they do offer that really great at home, super convenient, complete thyroid test kit. You can get $30 off of that with the code HYPOCHEF. The total cost, I believe, is $69 when you use that coupon code. Um, And I will put a link to Paloma Health in the show notes as well in case any of you are interested, worth looking into if you are in that boat of not getting the care that you need, being invalidated at your doctor's appointments, not being listened to, you know, medical gaslighting is real, sadly. And and I think most doctors don't necessarily intend to do it, but they're, they're operating on a standard of care that is sadly outdated. So very important to find that health detective. Keep searching until you get that person. Last but not least for today, step five out of my 10 steps I took to reclaim my health from Hashimoto's and the last one that we'll cover in part one of this two-part podcast episode. Step five is testing, testing, testing. 
So while I was searching for my doctor, right, and then waiting for that initial appointment for several weeks, I asked my physician, would she run a full thyroid panel? I had learned what that was. So a complete thyroid panel is not just TSH, but also free T3, free T4, TPO antibodies. Some practitioners also recommend TG antibodies. Those antibodies tests will tell you whether you have thyroid autoimmunity or not. And by that time, when I was, you know, getting that new doctor, I'd hit my rock bottom and and went out searching for better answers and better medical care. I had learned at that point that up to 95% of people with hypothyroidism, especially in the US and other developed countries like Europe and Canada, those, you know, we've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, but what we have in actuality, over 90%, let's say, you know, up to 95% have Hashimoto's which is autoimmune hypothyroidism or autoimmune thyroiditis. And so I figured I was probably one of them. I knew that the 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 great likelihood was that that test for my TPO antibodies was going to come back positive, is going to come back with elevated antibodies. But having never been tested, I still didn't know. How are we to know if we're never tested? How are we to understand what's going on in our bodies if we're never tested for Hashimoto's, especially when the vast majority of us have that? There was no conversation that ever took place in my, you know, my original physician's office those first four years uh, around Hashimoto's. And again, I know I'm not alone in this. This is sadly a very common experience for thyroid patients. Luckily, my physician agreed to run a complete thyroid panel. All I had to do was ask. That's worth doing. If you have never, you know, asked your doctor, just ask. It doesn't hurt because if they say yes, then maybe your insurance will cover it. My physician agreed to run a complete thyroid panel. And a week or so later, her nurse called and said, yeah, your levels were all normal except for your TPO antibodies. So you have Hashimoto's. It's what the doctor expected, I remember her saying. And I'm sitting there on the phone like, okay, I have an autoimmune disease. If the doctor expected it, why didn't she test me for it? Why didn't she educate me about it? I still, it just blows my mind to this day that that can happen. That's not empowering to patients and it's really just not okay. So in that moment, that was like, that was a moment for me. I got in my car that day. I remember, I can't remember. I was going to like the grocery store or something, but I just was sitting in the driveway and I had just gotten the news and I was like, four years, I have suffered Four years, I have been tired all the time. And meanwhile, I'm trying to raise my son. How is this possible? And I just, I remember gripping the steering wheel and screaming this like animal scream at the top of my lungs, just all those years of suffering and sickness and fatigue and frustration, invalidation, gaslighting, lack of answers, lack of effective treatment. What the actual living... Okay, how is this acceptable? It is not okay. It is not okay. And this happens disproportionately to women in the medical establishment. Okay, not okay. Something in me broke that day. And I'm like, I'm done. I want answers. I want my life back. I'm done letting someone else tell me it's all in my head. I'm done accepting this compromised quality of life, this compromised health. I'm done being tired all day, every day and watching as all my dreams, I couldn't, I could barely hold a job at that point. All of that was slipping through my fingers. Do you know how many people out there have had to quit their jobs because of something as simple to treat and no big deal as hypothyroidism? That that was a turning point for me. And as you can see, <laughs> and as you can hear in my voice, that fire has yet to go out. I don't think it ever will. And it's why I'm here. It's why I'm sitting here in front of this microphone, even though it's always been totally outside my comfort zone, because it isn't okay. And it needs to change. So I was I was done accepting that. And it was, well, it was my rock bottom. It was also the beginning of my recovery as rock bottom is, right? At that moment, 
I was like, I am taking the reins of this situation. I am taking responsibility for myself, which I think is one of the best, most profound things we can do in our lives in all aspects of life is take responsibility for ourselves. And I became the CEO of my health. And it all started with getting an accurate and complete thyroid diagnosis, which many of us out there, unfortunately, have yet to get. I still hear from people every day whose doctors straight up refuse to even test them for Hashimoto's because they don't want to get in trouble. It's not considered medically necessary. Explain that to me. I feel like most of us know and understand at this point, we're operating within a very flawed and broken healthcare system, which is actually a sick care system here in the U.S. And I know we're not alone in the U.S. too. Um, I hear frustrations from people in other countries as well along the same lines. I cover this in detail in my blog post entitled uh, Why You Should Get Tested for Hashimoto's. So I will link to that in the show notes as well in case you are one of those people listening who has never been tested. It's time. You can do it. You can order it yourself. It's not hard to do and it doesn't have to cost a lot. You know, as I mentioned my uh, Paloma discount earlier, $69. You can find out. And if you don't know, I highly, highly recommend that you do. It is key to understanding what's happening and your complete health situation and what you can do about it. Once I got that diagnosis, I had a clearer picture of what was actually going on in my body. And it was time for me to start digging deeper and really figuring out my root cause factors and figuring out my optimized thyroid medication, what that meant. Root cause factors plus optimal treatment plus food and lifestyle factors. That's kind of the, that's the magic formula, right? So by naturopath, we got started together and it was so different from any kind of medical care I had ever received because it really was a collaborative experience. And right away, she, you know, she recognized that most of her patients were paying out of pocket. So she really helped me work within a budget and prioritize, okay, what tests? There's like, here's 15 different things we can do. Why don't you tell me your story? And, and then she you know, let me know, okay, here's where I think we should start. We don't have to do all of this. If it's too much for you, we can pair back, you know, so again, that collaboration, that communication, what's your budget? What can you do right now? And we started out with, I don't know, let's say half a dozen different tests. Nearly every bodily substance was tested for things like hormone imbalances, nutrient deficiencies, food sensitivities, parasites, gut dysbiosis. You know, these are all things that can be associated with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. And some of that testing, sure, it wasn't fun, like getting six vials of blood drawn in one sitting or having to collect samples of things that we normally flush down the toilet, okay? But the payoff was huge. It really gave my new doctor, my naturopath and I, a more comprehensive picture of what was going on behind the scenes in my body. And it ended up revealing a number of hidden issues. All those vials and samples provided us with the clues that we needed that enabled us together to come up with a plan, the plan, the action plan and the treatment plan that ultimately resulted in me getting my life back. I think that's a good place to wrap it up for today. It really is the part one of that story. It's the, you know, from the beginning of that health history, the beginning of my life, all those events that ultimately led to a hypothyroidism diagnosis in 2011. And then my first four years really struggling as a patient and learning some things the hard way and being forever changed because of it and ending up here with you today because of it ultimately, which I I love to do. And I thank you for giving me your ear to share my story. And um, I hope that it has been helpful and inspiring and informative to you and will help support your healing journey. So before we wrap it up, let's do a quick review of the first five steps we covered today. And again, I'll cover the next five steps 
of how I reclaim my health from Hashimoto's in the next episode of the Thyroid Healthy Bites podcast. So step one, coming out of the thyroid closet, accepting there is an issue here. I'm not going to deny or try to hide it from people that I have some, some special needs here around this thing and it does affect me. Okay, so coming out of the illness closet, step two, getting educated, reading, getting online, listening to podcasts. We are so lucky to live in a time with so many incredible free resources that we can use to educate ourselves about thyroid issues, what about our particular thyroid issue. Um, Step three, I recorded my health history, which gave me that bird's eye view and proved to be absolutely invaluable at my doctor's appointments and still is. Step four, I hired a health detective who was my naturopath, who I still adore and work with. I also, um, in 2023, switched to Paloma Health for my thyroid care. Figuring that stuff out has been such a game changer on my healing journey and continues to be like, you know, these are the tools that we have in our toolbox that we turn to again and again when we need a medication adjustment, when things change with our health, when when we go through the inevitable fluctuations that life and aging brings to us. And step five, testing, testing, testing. It is so worth it to Make that investment in yourself and in your health to get the answers you need. You know, that adage of test, don't guess is huge and is absolutely essential and can save you a lot of wasted time and money and overwhelm and frustration and going down rabbit holes that lead nowhere because ultimately all that information out there on the internet and on social media is valuable, but it is not personalized to you. Testing is where that personalization, a big part of where that personalization happens. That and with your doctor, your health detective, your good thyroid doctor. I've also written a blog post on how to find a good thyroid doctor. I will link to that in the show notes as well. So you'll have all kinds of resources that I mentioned today that you can look to the show notes for those links if there's anything that jumped out at you from that today. So you can start kind of maybe doing your own detective work, maybe order a book, maybe look into a local doctor, look into Paloma Health or something like that. Um, maybe there were some some things mentioned today that you've already done, and maybe there were some things mentioned that you haven't tackled yet. Pay attention to those. Pay attention to those and maybe think about, is there a step that I could take today or this week that would help me get that ball rolling on me reclaiming my own health because it is absolutely possible. I'm living proof. I'm living proof that food and lifestyle matter. And I'm living proof that that there's a lot more to hypothyroidism than just one test and just one pill. I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for joining me today on Thyroid Healthy Bites. I invite you to share your own experiences. If anything struck a chord with you today or resonated with you today, or if there was any you know aspect of these five steps that was maybe different for you, something that you'd like to share. If you're watching on YouTube, please, I encourage you always to drop a comment, share with your fellow thyroid thrivers. If you've enjoyed the show today, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave a review. Those reviews especially really do make all the difference in the world. So once again, thank you for spending this time with me today. I'm Jenny Mahar wishing you the best of health. See you next time.